have initialized your class, you then instantiate your class uh, with the constructor. See that right here? Then one of your tests will be called. It is not guaranteed that your tests will be executed in order here or that the uh, the names will be sorted. There's no guarantee whatsoever on those on that front. And that's in your favor. Um, your test will be executed. The destructor will be called. The next test gets executed. The next test requires that the constructor be called. It then in, then will call your uh, your instance method. It'll result and it continues that loop until you have iterated over all of your test methods reporting in as that's going on so you'll see over here I have uh, a failed test I have my past tests if I run all of my tests you'll see that I get oh what are you talking about how did that happen oh terrible Terrible, terrible coding standards. Um, you'll watch and you'll see that the um, tests don't all pass at once. Do what you need to do. Uh, they don't all pass at once. They all are basically queued up, and as things are going, you will get passing tests. And ultimately, it'll report in over here. And this is just the way that the Visual Studio test runner works. Um, I just wrote a test uh, for static bound functions that ensures that my method gets called. So I've got this static, um, using this guy up here right now, um, a static method that accepts our callback info object. It's void, doesn't return anything. On the other side, uh, all that it's being, all that it's responsible for is to update a variable. The variable is defaulted to false. We then toggle it to true. If I jump over to the implementation, um, when, uh, so the idea behind test driven development is basically that you write the least amount of code to make sure that your test passes and it just did. We now go through and refactor it until it works the way we want. And we're guaranteed that it will pass because every time that we come back over here, 